All right, guys, Bill, I'm here back with a new video. In this video, we're back talking about Survivor US, and here I'll be talking about the cast of Survivor 43. Now, this is obviously going to be my cast assessment, which through this, I run through the entire cast of the season, talking about my thoughts on them, and eventually give my winner pick at the end of the video. And in general, I do really like this cast. I mean, this is a cast that I instantly liked after the promo that was aired after the 42 finale. And as someone that has now watched that promo multiple times at this point, I've been excited for this cast. I've been excited for this season. I do feel like it's a season that they should be able to fix a lot of the issues that were there were 41 and 42. And based on things that we've heard from Jeff himself on the things that they are going to change, it does seem like they're changing the correct things. So while I don't think it'll be perfect, I, I definitely don't have much faith in Star Production to do everything that I want them to do. I do have faith in this season, so we'll obviously see how that goes. But with that, let's run through the cast. Now I will say that this video will mostly be based around these players' bios and their get to know you videos. I've not seen any in-depth interviews with any of these people as of now so those won't play a factor here but let's start running through the cast i guess i'll go through them in alphabetical order here so let's start off with cassidy and cassidy is a person for me that i'm kind of just middle of the road on i mean this is a cast that in general i am pretty high on a good chunk of players however cassidy for me is a person that's like right outside of that tier where I think there is probably a good player there, or at least one that has potential. I mean, she does seem to be someone that's willing to play the game in a cutthroat manner. She does seem to know the game, but there's also this aspect of her that talks a lot about nature, and it really gives me, like, Courtney Merritt vibes to a degree, just in a more strategic shell. So I do feel like there's kind of conflicting things with Cassidy for me. I would not be that surprised if she ends up being a relatively early boot. But if she were to make a deep run, I do think she could potentially take the reins of the game. But as of right now, I'm kind of a bit more unsure of exactly how it will go. Next up, we have Cody. Cody Assenmacher, who I will say in my entire power rankings of who I think is the most likely to win this season, I actually have Cody at the very bottom. And it's not because I don't think Cody has longevity here. I think there's definitely a chance that Cody makes a deep run on this season, at least to like mid-merge or so but one I feel like it just seems so weird to me to think of Cody as a survivor winner here and also think of him even really reaching the end game stretch I mean he seems like such a massive personality really to me he comes off as instantly one of the biggest characters on this cast I mean the fact that he keeps on talking about how he gets radical and keeps on talking about his tattoo on his butt cheek it's like I mean this guy seems like a character and I think he should be fun tv I don't expect him to win the game, though. Again, I, I don't know how much is there gameplay-wise. Like, I'm sure he'll play hard. I would not be surprised at that. I just don't know how well he will play. And I don't really get the sense from him that he has the greatest game sense. So I'm not expecting him to do well in terms of winning the game. But again, I could definitely see him making a somewhat deep run here. Seems like a likable guy, despite his really bizarre personality. But again, not one that I'm expecting to win. Next up, we got Dwight, and I will say Dwight is another one of these people like Cassidy for me that's kind of right outside of the group that I'm expecting to do well. Dwight is someone that, again, like I'm just kind of middle of the road on. I didn't get the greatest read on him as a whole. I mean, I know he is relatively young. He's like 22. He also has a lot of experience in journalism, the where he's like interviewed a whole bunch of political figures, which good on him, but to me... I don't feel like that's the greatest sign from a gameplay perspective on Survivor, where again, the fact that he is so young and the fact that he is so accomplished reminds me of the likes of like a JD or a Liana or these other relatively young people that haven't really expanded beyond the academic sphere. And Dwight to me like has those red flags. But, I mean, like, outside of that, like, I do think there is a lot to like here. I mean, he is, again, a bigger guy to where I don't expect him to go home early on his tribe. He seems like an affable guy to where, again, I also don't expect him to go home early because of that. I am very much expecting him to make a somewhat deep run on the season. I think he should make the merge pretty easily, you would think. The question from that point on, though, is his positioning and his... Uh, awareness of where he is in the game that's where i'm a bit unsure so again like i think there definitely is a path for a pretty good run from dwight but not confident enough to put him as a winner candidate for me next up we're moving on to ellie and 
Ellie is the first person here that I am considering as a potential winner pick here. I mean, Ellie is a person that just coming off of the promo, I was extremely high on. I mean, she kind of gave me vibes of a mix of like a Michelle Fitzgerald and like a Kim Spradlin. Also vibes of maybe like a Haley from Australian Survivor. And like all those are very, very good things. And I said this in my 43 reaction video, like the fact that they just randomly allow her to talk about her job in the promo seemed like a good sign to me, which I mean, like realistically, it doesn't matter that much. Probably not considering the fact that I believe that promo was made before the season even finished filming. But I do get the sense that Ellie is going to be a big player on this season. I would not be surprised if she is the one controlling her original tribe. Now, I will say that her original tribe is the Baca tribe, which is an insane tribe. I mean, it's really a tribe of a lot of my favorite people from this cast. But a lot of them are big fans and seem like they're going to be big players to where, like, really, it could be a train wrecky tribe. But I feel like Ellie seems like one of the safest people on the board from that tribe, where I would be very surprised if she went home early. Now, again, I think in terms of long term, I could definitely see a world where Ellie becomes an endgame threat and gets taken out towards the end. I feel like that is kind of the trajectory I'm expecting from Ellie. But I feel like there's so much potential there with her coming off as one of the bigger gamers in my eyes. And because that, I do have her as a potential winner pick for me. Next up, we're moving on to Gabler, Mike Gabler, who is another big fan of the show. Another one of these people that I'm kind of like middle of the road on. Again, similar to Cassie and Dwight. Like he's kind of in that sphere for me where I think there is a road for him to do well. I do think there are some inherent disadvantages though. Obviously he's the oldest person on this cast by a good chunk. And that's obviously a disadvantage there. I think on paper, you would see some comparisons to Brad from 41. Now, I think realistically, they're very different personality-wise. But I do think archetype-wise of the fact that they are older men on their cast coming from more rural areas and are still seemingly athletic despite their age. Like, I think they are kind of having the same role on their tribe. And like with, again, the Baka tribe to me being the more outwardly strategic tribe in a very similar way to Ua was on 41. I could see that route for Mike of him being not necessarily like the first boot from the tribe, but maybe like the second or third boot if they go to tribal beyond that. Like, I just don't know how game savvy he's really going to be. Like, I know that he knows the game and I do think he at least has a basic level of strategy, but I don't know how in depth that strategy goes to where for me that and then also his age were just big enough question marks to where he didn't make the cut for me either. Next up, we're moving on to Geo and I will say Geo to me is probably one of the bigger surprises based on what I thought in the cast reaction to where I thought now or like based on the cast reaction of just seeing the photo that we had from Inside Survivor, I was expecting him to be a pretty buff guy. For some reason, that's the sense that I got from his image, but then we see him in the tribe photo, and he's like one of the smaller guys on the entire cast. So for me, that was kind of a surprise there, but I'll be honest, I didn't really get that much from Geo. I mean, Geo's someone I'm not particularly high on here, but I'm not really that low on either. I really just didn't get that much of a sense of how into the game he is based on any of the things I've seen of him. And just like basic archetype wise, like he does fit in line with the likes of like a Tai Trang or a Romeo, which are these figures that get to the end, but don't win the game. And through that, it's like, I'm not like particularly high on Geo here. There's nothing to really give me high hopes on him. Again, like for me, it's just, he was one of the harder people to read in terms of how well they're going to do. And because that not super confident in him. Next up, we're moving on to James and James is someone that I do really like here. I mean, he is a bit on the older side of things of this cast. I mean, he is 37 years old, which I think is still like a good age to play survivor. Again, I think like in your thirties, kind of perfect age to play survivor. Also, he's this big chess guy to where even in the promo for 43, he's talking about chess and that can come with some positives and negatives. Obviously, it can be good in the sense that he is going to have a very strategic mind for the game, but bad in the sense that he might look at people as pawns and not treat them accordingly. And I could definitely see the upsides and downsides of that. I do overall feel good about James, though, where for me, he is in this like top tier of the cast of these people that I did very much consider as a potential winner pick here, but I'm not going to move him forward as one of my top contenders here, mainly because I do feel like there is the massive question mark of how he's going to be able to interact with people, especially considering he did list Russell Hans as the player he's most like, which is like, eh. So okay, I do have a couple question marks here to where, despite me really like him here, I'm not going to move him forward as a potential winner pick. 
Next up, we got Janine. And Janine is a person I've seen so much love for. And I do really like Janine based on her interviews and everything. However, I'm not expecting her to do well, if I'm being honest. Janine is a person that I think screams out to me as pre-merge boo. I, I think this is a person that... I would be kind of surprised if they were to make the merge. I mean, like, I would not be that surprised if Janine's, like, the first boot from her tribe. Janine's a person that I do think knows the game. She does seem to be a fan. However, also seems to not be, like, super hungry for the win. I mean, she, in her interview, she does talk a lot about how she's in it for the experience, which to me were major red flags, which to be fair were red flags that I had with High last season, despite the fact that I picked High as my winner pick last season. But, like, realistically, like, I don't think Janine's not going to play the game like I think she is going to be a big gamer here I just don't know how much of this drive to win is going to be part of her game where he saw off like high in 42 that a lot of his game was based around him wanting to have like the perfect statistics of everything and wanting to make sure that he was on the right side of the vote for every little thing and I could see similar red flags for Janine here, but I think even less so in the sense that Janine just archetype-wise feels like someone that would go home relatively early. To me, she kind of feels in line with someone like a Sarah Wilson, who's obviously the first boot from the Ua tribe, which again, I do think Baka kind of reminds me of the Ua tribe. I could also see her fitting in the mold of like a Chelsea Walker, a Ali Elliott, like a lot of these seemingly good strategic women that end up being early boots. And to me, just Janine screams out to me that from this season because that don't feel that great about her. Next up, we're moving on to Jesse, And Jesse is a person that I am pretty high on here. Now, realistically, a lot of this comes from the promo where he is a major focus in the promo. He gets to talk about his life story there and I do think that is a really really good sign for Jesse especially in terms of longevity I would be very surprised if Jesse does not make the merge phase of the game and really even like the back half of the merge like I do think Jesse should be here for the long haul especially when we look beyond that promo and like I think he's pretty well positioned on the tribe he's on to me he does give off this demeanor of him being able to run his tribe from the background like that's kind of the sense i get from jesse however i do think there is this potential of him being called out as a threat by the end game to where i do think the ability to get to the very end might be a struggle for him especially with the story he has and the type of game that i'm expecting him to play where really he does seem like a mostly well-rounded player and I would not be surprised to see Jesse win the game here. So for me, again, I'm moving him on as a potential winner pick. Next up, we got Justine. And Justine, for me, is another one of these people that I don't get the greatest read from. After reading her bio and watching her video, like I just don't have a great sense of how much she knows the game. I don't have a great sense of how she's really going to do in the game. I mean, like for most aspects, like she seems to be in line with like the perfect archetype for Survivor. Again, she's 29, which is like around the perfect age for the game. She seems athletic enough to where I don't expect her to be an early boot. She seems social enough. I, I feel like there are good aspects from Janine here. It's just that I don't get the greatest sense of how she's really going to play the game based off of her interviews. I don't really get a great sense of how in-depth her knowledge of the strategic game is. So, again, I do have really just a lot of question marks over Justine to where I, I could see her doing well. I would not be surprised if she makes a deep run this season, but I'm not really confident in any of that, mostly because like I just don't feel like I got a great sense of who exactly she really is based on her interviews and because that not a winner pick for me. Next, we're moving on to Carla, and Carla is someone I do really like here. I mean, right away from the promo, she comes off instantly really likable, and she gets to tell her life story in the Get to Know You video, and again, I feel like she should be instantly really likable, should have a big edit. The question is for how long? Now, Carla is in this grouping of people for me that, again, I am pretty high on. I do think Carla could do very well. I do see a lot of, like, Sari comparisons, potentially, with her. But along with that, I do think comes some variance. Like, I do think Carla is someone that could be an early boot. I would not be that surprised if Carla ends up going pre-merge. However, I think she's one of these players that if she does make the merge, she should be poised to do very well. I don't think she's going to instantly come off as the biggest threat on the board. I do think she seems to be very strategic and very social to where she should be able to maneuver through the merge phase of the game pretty well. And she seems like most strategic enough to where, like, I could definitely see her winning a jury vote. So, again, I think there are a lot of highs for Carla, but the main thing holding me back from keeping her as a winner pick for me is the fact that I just don't 
have as much confidence with certain other people that she will make it to the merge to begin with, where I could also see the route of her end up being the person playing the hardest on our original tribe and through that gets called out for that and ends up going home. I could definitely see that route as well. So because of that, not a potential winner pick, though I am still very high on her. Next up, moving on to Lindsay. And Lindsay is one of the older women on this cast. And I know a lot of people have been comparing her to Chrissy, and I can see those comparisons. Now, I do think Chrissy has a lot more intensity to her, where I do think right away, like, Chrissy just comes off as a really intelligent person in a very intimidating way. While I feel like Lindsay, to me, comes off a lot more palatable, I feel like she is someone that seems a lot more likable right off the bat, which I do think is overall a good sign for Lindsay. Now, I will say that I have recently had this trend of being high on some of the older women on recent seasons. I was high on Mariah last season. That didn't work out. I was high on Heather, and while she made a deep run, didn't end up being as good of a player as I was expecting. I was very high on Tiffany mid-season. That didn't work out. So I have had this trend of being high on some of the older women of the cast. But I do feel like Lindsay has the most positives out of any of those people for me in the preseason here. Like I do think Lindsay, while she can still be an early boot, again, she is still the older woman on her tribe. I do think that could lead to some inherent disadvantages based on perception. But if she were to make the merge phase of the game, like I could see Lindsay doing very well. I mean, at that point, again, who is targeting her and if she is able to pull out this like Chrissy-esque run of winning a whole bunch of cops at the end still being a strategic figure I could see Lindsay doing very well towards the end of the game and that is why for me I do have her as a potential winner pick next up we're moving on to Mariah and I love Mariah as a character I think she's gonna be fantastic TV has a really fun energy but I don't know how well it's going to do for her in the game. Now, I do think she's another one of these people. If she makes the merge, I think she should be fine. However, I feel a lot more worried for Mariah. For me, from the Baka tribe, I do expect Mariah or Janine to be the first boot from that tribe. I think it could go either way. So I think that's obviously an inherent bad sign there. But she, again, she seems extremely likable. But again, I feel like that likability could also be a target on her where they might want to get rid of her because she's so inherently likable in a similar way to how Marianne was talked about in the pre-merge of 42. And like, I can kind of see these Marianne comparisons with Mariah. However, I do think a major difference here is I do not get the killer instinct from Mariah. I think that's another thing that's holding me back with Mariah as a player is that Mariah is someone that is talking a lot about loyalty and sticking true to her alliance which we've seen it work out for other people of them being too blindly loyal but i do think we're in an era of survivor that is so hyper strategic that i don't think blind loyalty is something that's as respected anymore i mean when she talked about who's her player that she's most like she literally just made a quote of james don't bite the apple quote and again like for me mariah just comes off as someone that I just don't know how into the game she's really going to be, despite her seeming to be a big fan and also seeming to be a massive character. But just as a player, I just do not have as much confidence in her. So again, not a winner pick for me. Next up, we have NECA, who I am kind of conflicted on. I do think NECA, in her interviews and everything, came off with a bit more fun of an energy than I was expecting her to. I can definitely see potential for NECA being a likable figure on her tribe, but also to me, NECA seems like one of the most clear early boots on this season, to where I would be surprised if NECA makes the merge. I do feel like NECA seems like the outlier on her original tribe, to where her original tribe is a pretty stacked tribe. It is probably the most physical tribe of the season, but she seems like a massive outlier within that to where I would not be surprised if she is the first boot if they ever go to tribal. But I think, again, another player, if she was able to make the merge, I think she could do pretty well. However, again, like I think a massive downside here in comparison to certain other players that have that the stigma for me is the fact that I just don't know where she is game-wise. Like I don't get the great sense of how strategic she's gonna be i don't get the great sense that she knows the game that well despite supposedly being a fan like so again a player that i just don't expect to make it deeper on the season but even if she does i just think is one of the less game savvy people here to where like i can definitely see her making it to the end as a goat i think that's a very big likelihood as well again not expecting the greatest things from NECA. so not a winner pick for me next up we have noel and noel is a person that is obviously coming into this as an amputee 
Obviously, she has a very sympathetic story, and I do think that sympathetic story is something to knock against her here in the sense that, again, we've seen this before. Former amputees have been targeted because of that, because of the sympathetic story. However, I think even beyond that, I just never really got a good sense from Noelle. I will say from the interviews themselves, I got almost nothing from Noelle. To be honest, she came off as really bland to me, and I just don't know how well socially she's going to do in the game. To where I do think there is some intensity that comes from Noelle, from my point of view. To where I don't get the great sense that she's going to bond with the likes of everyone. I think she's one of these players that might find her core. I think she might find a person or two that she's able to get along with, but I feel like the people outside of that core group might not get along with her in the game, and I feel like that's a worry there. To where, again, I would not be that surprised if Noelle is a pretty early boot here when you mix in this aspect of her kind of cold demeanor and then also her story. For me, I see almost nothing but negatives for Noelle. To where, like, also, even if she were to make a merge, I feel like she would still be a big threat at that point. Like, I just do not see the route for her to win this game. So again, not particularly high on her. Next up, we're moving on to Owen. And I love Owen here. I mean, Owen is someone in line with my last few winner picks in a Ricard and hi, these big super fans of the show that seem to be hyper strategic figures coming into the season and also seem like likable people beyond that. Like that is Owen here. He's in line with my other winner picks and obviously he's going to move forward as a potential winner pick for this video. I will say that Owen actually kind of surprised me coming into this where I came into this expecting a lot of like Omer vibes from 42 and like while that's still certainly there the fact that he is like as physical as he seems to be the fact that he is like kind of a strategic version of like woo is kind of out of left field for me again i didn't expect him to be like probably one of the more physical guys on his tribe like that was definitely not uh, expectation of mine coming into this which i think is probably for the better in terms of longevity i mean like i do not see owen going home anytime soon i think him and ellie are probably the two safest people from the baka tribe for me to where again i expect him fully to make the merge i think the big question is threat management beyond that again like in comparison to people like a ricard or a high threat management was their biggest issues in the game and i do think owen will struggle with that as well but i mean owen is just a person that inherently i would want to root for for here while with survivor typically i don't really have rooting interest at this point i do feel like owen is the type of person that i would want to root for so because that again still keeping him as a potential winner pick next up we got ryan and ryan for me is another one of these people that i did not get the greatest vibe from now ryan is someone that is like again, a pretty physical guy he's a personal trainer like i don't necessarily expect him to go home early However, I have no faith in his overall game ability based on what I've seen from him. I mean, he seems to be another one of these players that's kind of more out there for the experience. He doesn't seem to be super strategic in the game. I mean, he seems to be another one of these guys that is mostly playing around loyalty. And he has named the player that he's the most liked to be Rupert, which, I mean, again, I love Rupert, but not the player that I would want to be the most like. Like, I really just do not get any good vibes from Ryan in terms of his overall game ability. As a TV character, I mean, he seemed actually kind of fun. I thought he had a good energy in his interview, but in terms of his overall game ability, not much faith there. Don't think he's going to do well. And finally, we have the youngest person on the cast. We have Sammy, who is 19 years old. And right away, I think that's a major red flag. I mean, again, the younger people of Survivor have never really been poised to do that well. While we even had these winners in a Jenna Maraska, a Fabio, a Sophie, it's like none of them were even that poised to win the game, where Jenna and Fabio had to both rely on competition wins. Sophie was someone that wasn't even that liked by a lot of her cast. And when even going beyond that, again, we have the likes of JD, of Xander, of Liana, of of Swathi, of Lydia. It's like, I mean, a lot of these younger players just have these inherent disadvantages due to the lack of life experience. And I do feel like Sammy fits in line with that. And I don't feel like he did anything in his interviews to really counter that. I was actually probably higher on Sammy coming in this season than what I am after seeing more of him, where he does seem to be pretty cocky. He seems to be very confident in his ability in the game, which seems completely unfounded. And while I could definitely see him being a pretty big strategic player early on, 
I do see more of this like Will Wall style of trajectory for him where I think that will eventually blow up on him. And even if it doesn't, I don't think he's going to be respected by the majority of this cast where I just do not expect him to win this game. But there we go. I mean, that is the entire cast of Survivor 43. Now I've narrowed down the contenders for my winner pick to four people here. I've narrowed it down to Ellie, Jesse, Lindsay, and Owen. And I really like all four of these. I think all four of these people could very easily win the game. I think the first person I'm going to cut, though, is Lindsay, just because, again, the stigma of the older woman. While I do think the current meta is one that would probably counter that stigma to where I feel like the trend of older women not being respected has kind of become so well known within the survivor community that I feel like someone like Lindsay could overcome that stigma. I still feel like there's some variance in her early game to where again not as confident in order to even make it there so again narrows it down to ellie jesse and owen again all three of them i feel very confident are going to make deep runs on this season i'll be very surprised if any of these people are pre-merge but the next one i'm going to knock off is jesse largely because like i'll be honest again a lot of my opinion of jesse does stem from his prominence in the promo i feel like if i'm just basing it off of his interviews and everything he is fine he's probably actually probably more in line with the likes of a dwight and a cassidy and these figures i'm probably more middle of the road on but again it was his story in the promo that boosted him up a bit but again like realistically i do think he will be an end game threat and i don't know if he'll quite make it to the end so now we're down to owen and ellie and to be honest i mean they both have a similar issue like i do think both these people seem like people that will be threats by the end game the question is which one will squeak on through and i'll be honest i'm making a last second change here i do think i'm gonna go with ellie as my winner pick which is weird because again ellie was my winner pick coming into the cast reveal but then i did switch to owen However, I do think I'm switching back to Ellie. And I think part of this comes from one, Owen is in line with a lot of these previous winner picks I've had, which did not turn out great by the end of it, even though they did make deep runs. But again, High and Ricard did not win. And I think Owen is in that mold. Also, it's like, I feel like Owen will be more blatantly a threat by the end game to where I just find it tough to see Owen actually navigating his way to the end, unless he's in a position where he's not poised to win the game. But like, even then, like, I don't know how likely that really is. But again, to me, he just like comes off like so much in line with these strategic super fans. They have a lot of agency throughout a lot of the game, but it does eventually catch up to them. So again, I'm going to go with Ellie. Again, like Ellie, I can also see this big target on her by the end game. I think she is someone that does come off as very intelligent and I think will be looked at as a jury threat. But again, if you were to ask me which of these top three were going to squeak on by to the end, I would say Ellie is the most likely Though realistically, out of my contenders here, I would actually probably feel the best about Lindsay and her ability to actually make it to the very end. However, I feel like her lessened consistency early on is what makes me have to go with Ellie here, which again is where I was expecting to go from the preseason anyway. But there we go. I mean, that is my cast estimate for Survivor 43. Now, moving forward, I will obviously be covering the season in a similar light to how I've done previous seasons. I will be doing a mid-season power ranking around time to merge. I'll then be doing a season review, which will probably be very, very long, and then follow that up with a player ranking, ranking every player on the season based on how they played on the season. Now, moving forward, I still have some bigger Survivor videos coming up, things like the post-merge ranking. I have this video where I talk through the luckiest moments for every Survivor winner. I have... A ranking of every merge episode and every merge tribal council i have a lot of top 10s in the works top 25 jury speeches at some point down the road survivor thailand retrospective which is ridiculously long so again there's a lot of survivor stuff coming up down the road obviously right now we still have a lot of things going on as well we have the challenge usa we have big brother that's coming to an end so expect content on that we also have amazing race 34 coming up pretty soon i might also have some other amazing race videos so again, a lot going on here and also if you want to hear my opinions on the season survivor 43 as the season goes along you follow me at twitch at twitch.tv slash review where i'll be streaming after every episode at 11 p.m and also stream on sundays at the same time so again if you want to chat about the season you can find me there but for now that is the video thank you for watching